All right, welcome to Lake House Live. I'm Ash, and today we have Steam Engineers in the studio with us. Um, they're gonna kick us off with a first tune, so take it away. them playing their song Wind Chimes 2, not to be confused with Wind Chimes, which is also another song that is off of their album from 2022 called Lady of the Lake. Um, thank you guys for being here today. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Hunter, for coming out. Oh, thank you. Um, I'd love to, to hear a little bit about the album. I know that you and I have talked in the past and this is something that's, you know, got a concept to it. So I'd love to hear a little about that concept. Yeah, it, it, the, the album's a story. It's mostly a retelling of Guinevere and Lancelot from Arthurian legends and just kind of filtering that through my own personal life and just kind of injecting it. And because I just found it really interesting, especially during COVID. I, I mean, I'm always a fantasy novel freak, but especially during COVID, I read like 30 books, just had nothing to do. So really delving into fantasy. And then cause there was an aspect of you know, death in the air all the time. So it was mm -hmm. always that kind of like thinking like, oh, is somebody I love going to die? And then thinking about these old fantasy books where you kind of tackle that in a more mythological way. So just retelling kind of my fear of losing my partner, but in this fantasy world, essentially. Wow. I was going to ask if, if there was a specific reason why you chose that story to retell in your own way. and um, Just like the the romantic part of it. And like, cause there's been so many different versions of it. So I kind of wanted to do my own version of it where there's some Guinevere dies, some Lancelot dies, some neither. So I just wanted to do my own take on it. And that's currently what I was reading at the time. That's really beautiful. Oh, thanks. I love that. 
Um, so let's let you play another song off of the album. Um, so you're going to play With Flowers now? Yep. So you guys can take it away. Thank you for playing another amazing tune for us today. Really appreciate it. Um, you guys are all absolutely so amazing at your instruments, and it's truly like inspiring to see it. Yeah, everybody here is much better than I am, and there's <laughs> there's a reason for that. I'm the weakest link here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I think you all definitely hold your own, um, especially with so many different instruments. This is the the biggest group of people that we've had in one one space for uh, a Lakehouse Live so far, and it's it's a lot. It's yeah. It really brings everything together though, and sounds very cohesive. And that's not you know it's not a very easy thing to do. So. It's not easy to schedule either. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. That's probably the hardest part of, of being such a big like group of people. Yeah, and then when it's you can't get everybody for the show, you just kind of fake your way through it. You just, yeah. you just omit parts and you just play louder just to cover it up. And hopefully, if people know the parts, they're not going to miss them too much because we're just we're going through it so quickly. Yeah, yeah. That's not too bad. I've seen, I mean, I've seen you play by yourself and yeah. it sounds amazing too. So the music translates in so many different ways. That was kind of the point too, where they had to work by myself and then everything else is extra kind of a thing. Yeah. Because I didn't know anybody before, you know, playing this, like when I was recording, it was just me. So it had to work that way. That's amazing. Do you want to kind of go a little bit into that process? 
Sure. I mean, I just mostly hear everything in my head, and then I, I'll when I'm playing guitar, usually I'll hear all these extra things in there, and then I just have to figure out what it is, and then I'll go to Andrew, be like, "Hey, can we have? Can we do this? Can we get this done?" And usually he'll say yes or no, depending <laughs> if it's too crazy. And then we just, like, I know Jen, so it's easy to be able to get Jen to do all the string parts, and then Andrew was going to play bass, and I could do the guitar stuff, and then it was finding other people for other things. And then, so it had to work by itself first, because I knew I didn't have a band, really, so if I was going to play live, it was probably going to be me. So yeah. I had to be both. And then finding people who are really good at their instruments and who I can get along with, and that's the easier part of the, uh, well, it's hard finding them, but then once they're, <laughs> yeah. they're good at their instruments, so then that part's easy. Yeah. That's really amazing, though, to be able to see all of you guys in one space and also to see you act as one. Yeah. It, it's really worked wonderfully. Um, and what, what, um, what's inspired you musically? I know I, I obviously hear a lot of like Smashing Pumpkins vibes, as, Smashing as Pumpkins. you know, I love yeah. Smashing Pumpkins too. Um, I definitely hear the Neutral Milk Hotel vibes. Um, is there anything else, like any or any other person or any other thing that inspires you to write and to play? It's a lot of Billy Corgan. A lot of <laughs> this album was a lot of Machina. Weirdly enough, you wouldn't think yeah. about it, but it's a lot, a lot of Machina. Um, Spencer Krug and Wolf Parade are always a huge inspiration. Very cool. Um, you know, My Chemical Romance, The Damned, The Misfits, weird things you wouldn't think inspire it, but are kind of more conceptual based bands mm-hmm. that usually lend to I mean, Paul McCartney. The Beatles are always a big inspiration. It was a real big Sgt. Pepper inspiration on this. Even You might not hear it, but it's in there. It's in my brain somehow. <laughs> It comes out somewhere. In some way. <laughs> That's a lot of different people that you just listed, a lot it's of a different soup. bands. <laughs> it's a soup. Um, but it's really, it's it's super cool. Um, I would never expect you to say, like, The Beatles, The Damned, and <laughs> Smashing Pumpkins all in, like, one sentence. But at the same time, I'm, I'm sure that they have been influences, or been influenced by The Beatles at some point. Yeah, because, everybody has, yeah. Yeah, everyone is at some point. <laughs> um, but that's really cool. Yeah, I like- it works most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't work, and then, like, okay, how do we reverse engineer this to make it not sound like a Smashing Pumpkins song? But <laughs> it always will a little bit. Well, I don't mind that. I'm sure there are plenty of people that definitely don't mind that. I'm sure. <laughs> um, and are you are you planning to do anything more? Are you are you writing more and looking to do another album? Are you going to be playing some more shows? What's going on? Yeah, we have one show coming up in August. Uh, I haven't been booking many just because I'm my brain. I've been writing, and I can't really book and write at the same time. My brain just doesn't work like that. So that's hard. I need to get better at that. But I am writing. It's another conceptual piece, and it's even bigger, and there's more stuff going on. And I'm probably, I think I have nine of the 13 songs I'm planning to have on it. So I'm only a couple songs shy. Planning to be done with that by September, then work with Joey and Andrew on some drums and the basic bed tracks and then build everything on top of that. So hopefully recording in the fall. Very cool. Hopefully. Are you, um, are you kind of going off of that same concept that you did with Lady of the Lake or are you doing something different? No, something different. It's definitely more introspective and more about depression itself and how the most basic concept of it is just like how you're kind of, your depression's a different thing than you're, than you. It's almost like there's two people in your head at the same time. So I'm kind of jumping off of that to tell the new story of that's amazing that's very very different see how it goes it's much it's much bigger and more theatrical and even more instrumentation and more guitars and more singing and it's more of everything very cool i can't wait to hear it (laughs) (laughs) me too me too um all right so we we have one little like other part of our uh our show that we do and i guess i just call it like the question bowl segment but um so before you play your last song, I'm going to pull a, a question from this bowl and bowl ask question. you to answer it. <laughs> and for like a little backstory, um, so we keep this bowl in the um, lobby of the studio. Um, and basically we just leave out paper and a little note and people write random questions. And some of them are super weird and some of them are super normal. All right. Well. Oh. Hopefully a kid right, asks well, something. Well, that's apparently the question because it just keeps falling out of the box. <laughs> it was destined to be. I really 
don't know how you're going to answer this. <laughs> All right, we'll see if I can talk my way out of it. Um, well, it's it's. I feel like I need to be asking you this question in like a, as if I were in some kind of acting role, like okay, like I'm in a Marvel movie or something. Okay. <laughs> um. So, <clears throat> I feel like this is insane. Okay. Do I dare disturb the universe? <laughs> No, you don't dare to disturb the universe. You never dis dare to disturb the universe. I've had my own experiences disturbing the universe, and I can tell you, don't do it. Okay, how have you disturbed the universe? <laughs> it's a strange story. I was I was meditating for a while, and I got into this place with meditation where I was able to like kind of like feel like whatever universal vibrations going on, and I got a little uh, I got a little uh, I was a little proud of myself for getting there, and then I kind of was a little. <laughs> I pushed a little too far, and then it's then I felt like negative stuff come in, probably because I was being a little aggressive with, with how with, enlightened I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were really confident about. I it. I was really confident about how enlightened I became, which is always <laughs> the perfect thing to do. So I don't suggest that. So no, don't disturb the universe. All right, leave it alone. I dare not. Um, thanks for whoever created that moment because it's so ridiculous um okay so before you play your last song um i just wanted to say thank you for coming out thank you to all of you guys you're so amazing and so talented um very excited to be able to see more music come out um and make sure you, the people who are viewing you know follow steam Engineists on instagram on all the social platforms um listen to their music on all of the places that you listen to music, like Spotify and Apple and Bandcamp, etc. Um, and if you are enjoying the content that we are putting out, please make sure that you like and subscribe so that we can continue to do this and continue to support artists in our area. Um, this is the whole reason why we do it, and we love to hear the support. We love to see comments. So, yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, so thank you guys for coming out again. And here is their last song, Lady of the Lake. Feeling 